All right, let's switch gears. I'm excited to jump into the Word of God this morning in Exodus chapter 20. We are going through our Ten Commandments series, and today we are on the fourth commandment, Sabbath, as we've heard and sung about already this morning. I'm going to pray and then read our text. We'll be in Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence. Thank you that we all are present here today. May you minister to the anxieties of our souls. May the word of God bear on our hearts. Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock, or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. This is God's word. I started practicing the Sabbath as a college student. It was probably my sophomore, junior year. And it was, it was peer pressure, quite frankly. I was part of a Christian fellowship back at Duke University. And um, the folks in my fellowship, they were very conscientious students. They actually were very, very smart. Uh, they cared about their grades. But some of the upperclassmen had already practiced the Sabbath. And, and they began sharing testimonies about how, you know, their GPA, maybe for some of them, actually it went up. Uh, they took a day where they weren't studying. Uh, and others, they said, you know, my GPA didn't go down. You know, it's like, because it was, it was already up. You know, it's just, I didn't lose any points. Uh, and, and so I just remember getting confronted with, if I did not study for one day out of the week and observe Sabbath, what would happen? Like, what's going to happen to my GPA? I mean, um, it, 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 it's almost kind of like, it's magic. Like my GPA is just going to uh, magically go up, you know, for $19.99, just pay shipping and handling. If you order this package of Sabbath keeping, you will see results guaranteed. Um, but of, of course, the, the Sabbath is not, it's not like that. But I, I could say this. I mean, I was a student who is overcommitted. Maybe you're overcommitted in wherever point of life you are. I was a part of a, a Christian fellowship. I was going to church. You know, every Sunday, uh, I was a pre-med student. I was a philosophy major. I had a work study. Um, at some point in my junior year, I started serving in the children's ministry every week for a year. First and second graders every week. Then I mentioned I did that every single Sunday for a year. Um, what else did I do? Oh, yeah, I was in an a cappella group. Uh, before that, I was in a group corral. I had a lot of stuff going on. My freshman year, I would start homework, I think around 11 p.m., you know, after I caught up with everybody in the dorm, on the hall, or wherever, wherever just making sure everybody's doing, okay, now it's time to start homework. Chemistry, all right. Uh, so, but when I started practicing the Sabbath, it forced more intentionality into my schedule. Wait, I can't procrastinate. I'm going to be taking a full day off to study. Oh, actually, I need to get myself together, my act together here. Uh, and I can honestly say that I saw improvements. That was, those were the early days of Sabbath keeping for me. And I would certainly say that I've grown in the practice of Sabbath and its understanding and, and how to approach it. And today, this is our commandment. If you're familiar with the Ten Commandments, you could really break them down into two, two groups. The first four about our relationship with the Lord, the vertical love for God, loving God. And the, and the last six for loving people. But there's something interesting about the Sabbath. It's, it's really, it really gets at the heart of both. And, and we'll talk about that. It's, in practicing the Sabbath, you actually will be more inclined to love other people as well as, of course, loving God. 
So our title today is Honor the Sabbath. And there are three points I want to make here. Why you need one, how you keep one, what God does in you. Why you need one, how you keep one, what God does in you. Sabbath. Why you need one. Sabbath, the word itself, the Hebrew word, comes from a verb, sabbat, or shabbat, means stop. It means cease. So why do you need a Sabbath? Well, let me ask you a question. When do you ever stop? When do you ever stop worrying? When do you ever stop being anxious? When do you ever stop producing? When do you ever stop striving, stop controlling, stop running around? When do you ever unplug? When do you ever stop scrolling? When do you ever silence your notifications and detach? This, the Ten Commandments are spoken to the people of Israel in a specific time and place. God is speaking on Mount Sinai. And the events surrounding this are such that the Israelites have just been delivered by the Lord, taken up on eagle's wings, delivered out of Egypt. In fact, the beginning of uh, chapter 20, it says that I took you out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. For 400 years, they had been slaves. You know when slaves rest? They don't. They're slaves. They work. They have quotas. They have expectations put upon them. And if they don't meet those expectations, there are punitive consequences. Slaves live in a, in a perpetual punitive mindset. They have a quota. They are called to produce, produce, produce. And so therefore, if I stop, something bad will happen to me. I'll get punished. I'll get behind. I'll lose out. The society we live in breeds a slave mentality. Its message to you is you're behind. You're behind on saving for retirement. You're behind on saving for college. You're behind on your laundry. You're pushing another decade and you're not married yet. You're behind. You haven't started having kids yet. You're behind. Your kids are behind. That's the message of our culture. And therefore, because that message permeates so many aspects of our lives, we carry this anxiety. We think we have to keep moving forward, keep pushing forward, keep pushing out, keep producing. We never stop. It's a slave mentality. Psalm 23, David says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in, in green pastures. But if we're honest, sometimes we don't want to lie down. We want to keep going. We resist the shepherd saying, you need to stop. And so in some cases, our bodies break down. We get sick. We get tired. We get exhausted. And our bodies are telling us to stop. For some of you, and I say this in utmost love for you. Some of you, you don't stop because your neighbor keeps going. Because your colleague keeps going. Because your boss keeps going. As Ecclesiastes 4, 4 says, Toil and skill and work come from a man's envy of his neighbor. Your neighbor got a boat. Your neighbor got this condo. Your neighbor did this. And so therefore, you need to keep going. Look at what they did. Your neighbor got that promotion. Your colleague got that promotion. You need to keep going. You, you don't stop because your neighbor keeps going. For some of you, you don't stop because when night comes, the day ends, your heart is so full of anxiety. 
As Ecclesiastes 2.23 says, days are full of sorrow. Your work is vexation. You get up the next day and get, well, it basically says that your heart is sorrowful. It has no rest at the end of the, at the end of the day. You go to work. It's a labor. It's not enjoyable. You need a Sabbath. Some of you don't stop because your personality type. You took a test and it says, oh, you're a this. You're a three. No, you're a one. You're a achiever. You're whatever it is, whatever test. And because you got that result, you justify, well, that's my personality. I can't stop. I just must keep going. But Jesus is your ultimate identity. And he calls you to rest. You need a Sabbath. For some of you, you don't stop because it's a learned habit. Your dad was a workaholic. His dad was a workaholic. That's all you know. And so you just keep going. You need a Sabbath. For some, you don't stop because, frankly, we live in an anxious age. And there are the news that bombards our phones just perpetuates anxiety. The knowledge of our economy being unstable, the wars that are happening and conflicts around the world, another shooting to add to the mix, et cetera, et cetera. And you don't stop because want to cover a lot of anxiety that's going on inside. You need a Sabbath. Or maybe you don't stop because you're a single mom, you've got young kids, or for some other reason, you feel like you don't have permission to. You've got dishes piling up, you've got laundry to do, there's chores to be done, there's kids to get ready, etc., etc. How could you possibly stop and feel good about yourself? You need to stop because your going is damaging. It's damaging. I mean, we live in an age, if we would all just take a moment and think about the mental health crisis that we are all living in as a result of a, a, a confluence of things, of course, the pandemic being a major one. We live in an age where studies say that Mental health in teens or adolescents has just really gone down since 2009. The point at which smartphones and social media have merged. Mental health for adolescents is going down. We live in an age where last year there was a record deaths related to opioids. We have an anxious age. We live in an age where though we have cars that can drive themselves and park themselves and have crumple zones and airbags, the last two years, vehicular deaths have gone up, whereas they have been steadily declining. And the only conclusion, people's behavior due to the pandemic is so much more erratic, so much more violent, less caution. We live in an anxious age. You need to stop. You need to unplug from that. It's damaging you. So point two, how do you keep the Sabbath? Sabbath means to stop. It means to cease. Well, obviously on the base level, it's for a 24 hour day or 24 hours period, I should say, Every week, you would have a rhythm where you stop working. I mean, it says in verse 9, six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work. You, your son, your daughter, your male servant, female servant, etc. But when you dig into what that looks like and how that plays out, first of all, it's going to look differently for all of us. We all have different things that work, constitutes work for us. Obviously, our job, that's a no-brainer. But there are things around our house that may be work-oriented for us, and there are things that are around our house that may be fun-oriented. 
But setting a day where you, or a 24 hour period where you unplug, where you take your phone and you say, do not disturb. No more. I don't need to know what's going on in the world for one day out of the week. I don't need to be, I don't need to know the latest tweet. I don't need to know what to like on social media. It's a day where you actually humble yourself and you realize you're not that, you're not as important to keeping the world together as you would like to think. The world will actually go on if you stop. Because Jesus is in control when you rest. For my family, we recently, we added a new wrinkle to, to Sabbath, which by the way, this is a lifelong discipline. It's not just a, and it's not an outward practice. There's some, there's a, a deep inner work that God wants to do and you will talk about that in a moment. And so there are things that you, maybe you've done Sabbath for a long time. I would encourage you to find new things to incorporate. But as a fa family, we started lighting a candle to start the day. Well, for my wife and I, so of course Sunday is not a Sabbath for me. I work on sat on Sundays, just in case you didn't know. I work on Sundays, uh, and so for us, it's it's usually Saturdays is our Sabbath. Uh, Becca and I on Friday nights will light the candle. Saturday mornings we'll do that with the kids. Say if, uh, just a quick prayer that the Lord would help us to to stop, to slow down, to worship. And to delight, to delight in God and His creation. You were not created for a computer screen. You were created for relationships. You were created to glorify the Father. You were created to enjoy His creation. And for 24 hours every week, you need to delight in Him. Delight in the nature around you that is going on all the time that we so easily lose track of. Because we're worried, we're stressed, we're anxious, we're pushing. But the candle exercise is, is, is it's, based, it's to set anticipation. It's to set apart. Like Sabbath is something that is set apart. The china in your cabinet, you have china is set apart from the dishware you use on every day, right? You use China for certain things, special occasions. You use the other dishware whenever. The Sabbath is supposed to be set apart, to be kept holy. That's what it means to be holy, to be set apart, to set it as holy. It is set apart from all the other days of the week. It's not like the other days of the week. It is set apart. It's to create a weekly rhythm to your life. James K.A. Smith, he talks about that you are formed by your rituals and your rhythms. It forms your loves. It forms your affections. And God gave you the, the Sabbath to form your affections around him, to delight in him, to remind yourself that you are not a slave, but that in Jesus Christ, you have been set free. Do fun things. Make the Sabbath fun if you have a family. And in fact, it specifically says include your family. It's written, reading the text, this commandment is written to those that have authority over others, right? Because it says, not only for you, Verse 10, but your son, your daughter, your servants, your employees. Now, of course, you could have employees that are not Christians. It's not saying that you need to make them take a Sabbath, but it does say be mindful of the people you oversee to give them space to breathe, to break. Maybe you're an educator, and maybe you think about when break times are happening or your weekly rhythm of how you do assignments. Are your students, do they have space to breathe, to rest? 
to have time off? Or do you pile up when the break time, oh, please do this project over your break. It's an encouragement for us to allow others around us, those in our family, those that we have supervision over to rest. Create excitement about the Sabbath. Unplug from your phone, unplug from social media. And the thing about a Sabbath is it's not a day off. It's not simply a day off. It's not simply, oh, I'm going to go, oh, I got my to-do, you know, honey-do list. Okay, honey, go do this or, you know, go do that. Or I'm going to run all my errands on my Sabbath. Now, for some of you, maybe that's fun. I mean, I suppose that's possible. But you could do those things on a different day. The, the, the Sabbath is not a day off. It is a day for you. It is a day to the Lord. It's about him. It's about you reconnecting with him. And maybe you say, you know what, it's summertime. Yeah, I recognize I got all this anxiety. I recognize I go too much. I'm about to go on vacation. That's going to solve all my problems. Let me encourage you. Your vacation is not going to fix all your problems. That would be akin to you going on a binge diet and thinking that was going to fix all your problems, right? That's not healthy. And, and, and it's not just about time off. It is about a rhythm, a weekly rhythm of your life that you are cultivating because God is going to form you in that rhythm. Which leads us to our last point. What does God do in you through a Sabbath? Because this is not just about an outward practice. This is not just about keeping the law as a discipline. God wants to form you. You ought to have expectation that he is going to transform you by regularly practicing the Sabbath. Now, I failed to, to mention this earlier. Some of you may have irregular schedules. Maybe you're in the medical field. And, you know, maybe if you're a, a, a med school student and you've got residency, or maybe you're just, there is a, there, for, there could be seasons of life for one demand or another where it's not practical to have a weekly 24-hour period. You just can't do it. Obviously, this is not about condemning you. But I would encourage you to find space to do to be creative and for your schedule to work that out however you can. But what does God want to do in you? See, in the Sabbath, he forms you and he keeps you be from being conformed to the idols of our world. As Trevor mentioned earlier, the exorcism of Babylon, the exorcism of I got to produce, that my life is justified by what I do. The Sabbath says, no, 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 that's not who you are. You're a child of God. You're created in the image of Christ. You're recreated into the image of Christ. In fact, when you think about it in, in those terms, the Sabbath is the one commandment that shows us that we're obeying the other commandments. Right? Because if you have enough faith to rest for 24 hours, then the Lord you put first. But if you're struggling to rest, then there's something else that's more important than God, right? There's, there's some other idols that are going on in your heart. And what the Sabbath does, the Sabbath is like, the, is like an aerator in the ground. I'm learning about taking care of lawns and gardens. Like I'm learning about gardens, I'm learning about lawns. So I, I learned about the aerator, right? The ground needs to breathe for the grass to grow. Well, that's what God does in you in the Sabbath. It's like an aerator. It allows your heart to breathe. It, it keeps the weeds of idols from growing. It allows the seed of his word to grow. It gives you space to breathe. It, it pulls down the idols of the world. It prepares your heart for worship. Now, for many of you, the obvious choice for a Sabbath is Sunday. And for all of us, no matter when our Sabbath is, worship ought to be a part of the Sabbath in one way or another. And, and so the Sabbath informs even how you approach church. You're observing it on a Sunday. That your, your heart, hey, I'm coming to worship. I mean, yeah, you have friends that you see at church or there's people you want to see or things you want to do. Or maybe you go to, you know, free the rest of the day or what have you. 
But church becomes not just, hey, I'm going to go see my friends. It's no, I'm going to go primarily, first of all, to worship the Lord. And, of course, to see people and all the other great things. The Sabbath cultivates your heart towards loving God and loving others. I told you I would come back to that. I mean, here's the thing. If you're going so hard and you're going so fast that you can't stop, probably you're running over people. Probably there's something going on in your horizontal relationships that if you really got people around you to be honest, they would tell you something's not right. Right? But if you're able to rest, if you're able to slow down and you're able to remind yourself you're not a slave, that you weren't created for computers and cell phones, that your life is not about your possessions, but your life is in Jesus, it creates the space for you to see people a different way, to not see them as a slave, to not see them as an object, but to see them as part of God's creation. The Sabbath keeping is not easy work. It's so we there. It's not easy to do, right? Because you start out on the Sabbath, then you think, oh, I should have sent that email, right? Or, oh, I can't believe, oh, there was this other thing I wanted to do. Well, let me do that. Those thoughts come to your heart like a spam caller on your phone. You have to press the crime. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to trust the Lord. For 24 hours, I'm going to, you know what? Maybe I should have sent that email, but I'm going to let, I'm putting that in God's hands. I'll get back to it tomorrow. I've, I can't tell you how many times I've had that spam caller thought, those spam caller thoughts come to my mind, and I, Lord, I give it to you. And then, lo and behold, it's not even that big of a deal when I pick it back up the following day. God wants you to know that you don't live for your career, but you live for him. It's in the Sabbath that he reminds you that he is your source and your salvation, that he is your rock and your deliverer, that you are not your source, that you are not your salvation, that your self-discipline is not your rock. In the Sabbath, God enables you to image him. What is the last thing? The reasoning for the Sabbath, God gives a reason. Verse 11, it says, for that's a causal. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Why do you take a Sabbath? Because God made the Sabbath. It's in you taking the Sabbath that he is making you more like him. The God, our God, as Isaiah, 6, Isaiah 40 says, he never grows weary. He rests. Not because he was tired, because, but because he, could, he wanted to enjoy it. And he gives you the Sabbath so that you can stop and enjoy him and his creation. And in doing so, you become like him. You realize that you, the reason why you work is because God created you to work, but he also created you to rest. God is a worker, but he also rested. You are a worker, you're called to also rest. And in fact, it's in the Sabbath that God connects you across the cosmos from the beginning of creation until the end of time. Here's what I mean. God initiated the Sabbath in his creation. It reminds you, our God rested from his work of creation. He didn't rest from his work of redemption. He continues. He never, Jesus says, my father is at work till this day. In the Gospel of John, Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us. He never, he doesn't rest from his, his redemption work, but he rested from his creation. Points us back to creation, but it also points us forward across the cosmos, the end of time, 
our Lord Jesus will return. And he will institute the new heavens and the new earth, the new creation, and we come into our ultimate rest, as the writer of Hebrews says. That we would enter into that rest. And so the weekly rhythm of Sabbath reminds you that you are part of this creation, but it reminds you that you're going to be a part as a believer in Jesus Christ, a part of the new creation. And the rest will come into the earth. The wars will cease, will pain, where pain will cease, where tears will be wiped away. Where there will need, need not be sun or moon because the light of our Lord will fill the city, the new Jerusalem that comes down from the new heavens and the new earth. And the Sabbath rest reminds us of what Jesus said on the cross. Each week, it is finished. I can rest in the work of Christ. So my encouragement for you today is to develop the rhythm of Sabbath. If you've never done that before. It takes faith. It takes trust in God. It takes crucifying idols in your heart. But it's God's commandment, and it's good commandment for you. If you've been a Sabbath keeper, to tweak your experience of the Sabbath, add elements that would encourage delighting in God, that would encourage worship for you, for your family, for friends, to have intentionality in your Sabbath. Contemplate what are the most frequent inhibitors of your Sabbath. What encroaches, what is that spam caller that says, no, you have to do this or you need to do that? Where does that come from? What's going on there? Contemplate that. Think about that. What is that source? What's... What's it pulling at? What's the root in your heart that it's getting at? Telling you to keep going rather than stop it. Be creative in your seasons and stations of life. Some of you are single. Some are married. Some have young kids. Some have independent kids. Some are empty nesters. Our Sabbaths cannot all look the same. But be creative with where you are and what you have. And don't let, don't let what you don't have condemn you. If you have little kids, oh, I can't take a break from them. Of course not. But you can play with them. You can spend time with them. Go to the playground, you know, or whatever. Read books. Sabbath is not merely an outward practice. It's God's invitation to us for him to do a deep work in our hearts. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you call us to rest, that you are our shepherd. You lead us by still waters to restore our souls. May we be obedient to that and may we not resist your offer that we would not be slaves, but that we would.